Welcome back guys to our Android programming tutorial series on Android material design. This is Annie from SmartHerd. In the previous video, we had learnt about the basics of floating action button and we went through the guidelines that are defined for floating action button. In this video, we will implement FAB into our application and see how it works. So let's move to Android Studio and start writing the codes. This was our XML file where we have defined the frame layout as the root layout and I have implemented the toolbar in our application. It is the same project we are working on where we had learned the snack bar. Let us add the code for the floating action button. Simply type floating and here we go android.support.design.widget floating action button. Set the width as wrap content and the height as wrap content. Define the source for the floating action button. SRC, drawable, IC done. Now this is the icon that I have defined in the drawable folder. This is the source from where the icon will be extracted to be used in the floating action button. After this, let us define the gravity where the floating action button will be present in our application. Layout gravity as the bottom end. We had seen in the Google guidelines that the margin for the floating action button should be 16 dp. So let us now set the margin for the floating action button. We are done with the height, width, source, gravity and the margin for the floating action button. We had learnt from the Google guidelines that there are two sizes of the floating action button that can be used in our application. Now the one we are using here is the default size of the floating action button that is it is the normal size. Let us define the size attribute for the floating action button. Now this app is the custom schema that I have defined here from the very beginning in activity main.xml for our Android application. The fab size is normal here. That is the reason we cannot see any changes. Let us change the size to mini and see what happens. We can see here the size of the floating action button has reduced. Let's keep it back to normal. There are few more properties of the floating action button that can be set in the XML file. The few more properties that we can set to customize the floating action button like the background tint, you can set the property for the border width, the property of ripple color and so on. This way we can customize our floating action button. So let's remove it now and run our application to see if the floating action button is implemented in our application or not. Here is our application up and running. On the right side at the bottom end we can see there is this floating action button. On clicking to the floating action button nothing happens. We need to add the on click listener to this floating action button. Let's move to main activity.java, define our floating action button there and define the on click listener to it. Floating action button, here it is, android.support.design.widget. Let's give it the name FAB, fab. So we need to give an ID to the floating action button so that it could be fetched into the main activity.java. I have given the ID for the fab as fab. Move to the main activity.java and define it. We have defined our floating action button. Now we need to implement the on click listener into the fab. We have defined the set on click listener for the floating action button. Now on clicking the floating action button what happens? We need to define the action that takes place on clicking the fab. I have written a toast message that will be displayed on clicking the floating action button. Now let us run our application and see what happens. Here is our application up and running. On clicking the floating action button let's see what happens. There is a toast message that is being displayed on clicking the floating action button. Now let us write the code to introduce the snack bar instead of the toast message when the floating action button is clicked. Simply copy this piece of code for the simple snack bar and write it in place of toast. Now let's see what happens on running our application. 
Here is our application up and running. Now let's see what happens when we click the fab. We get the snack bar when we click the floating action button. But the snack bar overlaps the floating action button. When the snack bar is introduced into the Android screen, the floating action button also should move with the snack bar. In the next video, we will learn about rectifying this error. What do we do so that the snack bar doesn't overlap the floating action button? That is all for this video guys. If you like the video, do share and leave your comment below the video. Subscribe to our channel and help us grow. I also have given the link for the source code of the entire module below in the description. You can go there and refer to it. For further videos, stay tuned, keep smiling and have a good day.